Hello everyone, welcome to LearnDAX channel. My name is Desh and in this video we are starting a series of videos in which I am going to try and solve very simple DAX problems. So if you are someone who has just started to learn DAX and wants to understand the basic logic and the basic functions and how do you manipulate data using those functions and using business problems and converting those business problems into DAX queries and validating the data using the data set then this series of videos is going to be very helpful for you in the first video we are going to consider three business problems from the data set that i have we are going to calculate the year-to-date sales we are going to identify the top five selling products and we are going to calculate the average order value but before we start the video there are a couple of things that i want to show you the first is i am going to pull all the columns from the table onto my canvas and then i am going to show you how do you create a date table because we are going to need a date table for this demonstration and also how do you create a table where you store all your measures it is very handy when you are having a big data lots of tables it's it comes in very handy to aggregate all your measures in one place so we're going to cover all of that in this video so without further ado let's get started so i have the product and the sales data and i'll just pull out each column one by one and i will also leave the link of this data set in the description so while you're watching this video you can practice along and even after watching the video you can practice this stuff and validate the data yourself i will also be attaching a link to a excel sheet which will have the solutions or the DAX queries of the functions that we are going to implement in this video so when you're practicing you will have a ready reference of those DAX queries as well so let's get started with it right now i'm just pulling each and every column from my table onto this canvas and i'm just doing that randomly i'm not pulling them in any particular order as such so these are the columns that I see that I have for the product table. I have around, from what I can see, I have around 15 products. Let's take a look at the sales table. Now the reason why I'm using these small data sets is because if you are starting new in tax, it's easy to take small data set and not get intimidated just by the size of the data set. It really helps to build the foundation up and then as we move along to bigger problems, it's it's much easier to convert that into bigger bigger data sets. So I have the sale ID. I have the I have to pull the region, quantity, order date, discount, customer ID. Let me just summarize or abbreviate the date. Yeah, sale ID, I don't want it to be summarized. Then I have the payment method. Customer ID also don't want it to be summarized. Yeah, this is quite big. I'll have to change the canvas size if I want to avoid the horizontal scrolling because I still have sales amount and the unit price, the country, and I believe I have a calculated column called as cost price, which we don't need in this particular video. So just because we want to have the whole thing in without scrolling i will probably increase the canvas size so i can go to the canvas settings choose custom and i believe we need to increase the height as well as the width so i'll make it 900 and the width can be 1600 so yeah this is much better and i don't have to now scroll i'll simply create a visual border for these two tables will help me to kind of distinguish these two tables from each other yeah now it looks much better so i have this products table which has these set of columns and the sales table with sale id region product id discount payment method country etc and i want to analyze uh, this data using the business questions that have been given to us one by one and we're also going to validate if the query that we write is correct or not using the same data set and i'll show you how we do that so first is i'm going to show you how to create a date table so i'll go to modeling new table and i have created a dedicated video on how to create a date table i will leave the link in the description you can go check it out 
for the purpose of this demonstration i'm just going to quickly call this a date table and since our data is from january let me just check once yeah it is starting from 15th jan 2023 right up to 23rd august 2023 so i think 2023 suffices our need for the time intelligence so i'll write calendar start date will be 1st of jan 2023 and end date would be 2023 december 31 your comma okay i think uh, okay instead of a comma we had a period in there so that should take care of our date table let me just quickly check change the formatting i just want a short date i don't want the time i'm not concerned with it so this gives us date right from the first of jan right up to 31st of december 2023 so we are good with that so let's take a look at the business questions or before that we have to uh, keep our measures in one place so how do i do that so here's one trick that i use i'll create a static table and i'll call it all measures and i'll not do anything i'll not touch this i just call it load and you will see a table right at the top that gets created yeah and at this point there is no column or there is one column but there's nothing in this table and this is where i'm going to create all my measures and store all my measures Let, let's just check if in our data model there is a connection between product and sales yes there is we will also need a connection between our date column from the date table and the order date column from the sales table if we are going to do any time intelligence between those two tables we need a connection so I'll simply drag date from date table to order date from this to the sales table. And there I have it a connection between these two tables. So let's start with what our business questions are. We have done all the setup. Now let's proceed with the questions. So the first business problem is we have to calculate the year to date sales. Now in order to do that, I'm going to use a function called dates YTD. So dates YTD stands for dates year to date. I'll show you how we can calculate that sum. So I'll just go here, quickly create a new measure and I'll call it sales YTT is equal to calculate sum sales amount and it has to be dates YTD which is essentially telling Power BI that calculate the sales amount for the complete year, year to date, year to date sales. And I'll simply provide the sales order date. And let's see what we get. So I'll bring this here onto my canvas and it's giving me a number. Now let's just change the callout value display units to none. So I get an exact number. Now, how do I ascertain if this value that I'm getting is correct or not? So the purpose of this video is to calculate such uh, variables or such values which I can easily verify from the data set. I'll just add a visual border to it. Yeah. So now I have this table. And if I clearly observe, this is the sales amount column. And at the bottom, when I look at this sum, I see the value as 29765 or even if I create a new measure and I call it total sales amount which is essentially the sum of the sales amount then what I get is again let me change the callout value display units to none. I get 29.765. So the easiest of the measures that we're going to build. A simple scalar value in which we use the dates YTD function in here to get the dates uh, to solve this business question.
calculate the year to date sales very easy the second question that business is asking is identify the top five selling products now here we are going to utilize two functions first is summarize and second is our top n function so let's carefully observe this data i have products like smartphone laptop tablet headphones smartwatch etc and they are being sold in various quantities if i take a look at the sale id and the product id so certain products are being sold in certain quantity and i want to find the top five selling products so let's build this query step by step first of all what i want is i want in one column that it should have the product name and in the corresponding column next to it i need to have the sales amount so for that i will have to use a summarize function now if you want to watch a dedicated video on summarize function i have created one and i will leave the link in the description and you can go check that out check that out so let's build it step by step so i cannot create a measure in this case because we are going to need two columns and measure is essentially a single scalar value so i'll, I'll have to create a new table so i go to modeling i call it a new table and let's say top five products is equal to now first i'm not going to try and find the top five values first i just want the product name and the sales amount so i'll have some i'll use the summarize function the sales table now what is the column that i want to group by in this case product name is the column by which i want to group because in the sales table i can have the occurrence of laptop three times because it sold three times in in the whole sales table or i can have smartphone that has sold four times or i can have a smartwatch that sold like six times so i want to essentially aggregate that product name such that if a smartphone sold six times then give me smartphone and those six occurrences just club them in one row and give me that value which is why we are using this group by so in that case we are grouping by product name now we have to name the column that we are going to create so i would call it uh, product sales it will be more intuitive to understand what exactly this is doing and i am going to calculate the sales amount that each product has sold now if i create this table let's see what happens let's see what we get okay argument 5 in summarize function is required which means i think we need not have a comma in here yeah now it works so if i quickly bring it here product sales i need to convert it into a table though and the product name so when i said that we are going to validate if we are doing the right queries that's because this is something that we created using the summarize function now i can do the same thing without using the summarize function i I'll, I'll show you how i can simply try i'll simply grab the name from the product table and i'll take the sales amount from the sales table and if i get the same result then our dax query is correct which begs the question then why are we repeating or why are we doing something that we can simply do in power bi well we are doing this because we want to learn the fundamentals of dax while validating if we are doing it correctly once we get the confidence that whatever code we are writing it has the correct logic then we don't need to validate but this is just one form of cross checking if we are doing the things correctly or not so if i clearly observe bluetooth speaker desktop pc drone e reader everything seems identical even the sales amount is identical so our summarize function is indeed correct now i'll quickly delete this and i'll just focus on the table that we have created which is product name and the product sales now what top n function does is we have to provide it with three arguments the first is the number of values that we want to extract the second is the table the third is on what basis do we want to uh, classify or like sort those values which in this case would be the product sales and then there is an optional argument where we can either define the descending order or the ascending order with descending being the default so on top of the summarize function let's create a top n function so i'll open this again now over the summarize function i'll write top n 
we want top five products so i'll write five now second argument is a table which in this case is this particular table that is going to be passed in as a table to the top end function now once i write a comma again now it's asking me what is the order by expression on what basis should i order these particular values so in that this is uh, my product sales so i have to order this based on the product sales so i'll write product yeah and like i said either ascending or descending but i want them to be in descending order so i just write descending and i'll hit enter and the resultant table is showing me top five values as you can see here now let me just quickly sort this in this order so that i have the top sales as per the descending order in the sales amount now again if i have to verify this i can bring the product name from the products table i can bring the sales amount from the sales table and i can apply a filter on the product and i can say advanced or top end filtering I want the top five values based on the sales amount apply filter and let me just sort it in that order and what do i get identical tables which means the tax that we wrote to extract the top five values is uh, is correct the logic is indeed correct so this solves our second business problem from our set of business problems now let's head to the third business problem which is to calculate the average order value this is fairly simple in this case we are going to use the average function or the average x function you can use either so i'll quickly create a new measure i will call it average order value is equal to average x i'll take the sales table and from the sales i can use the sales amount because the sales amount will be the order amount and that when i take the average of it it is going to give me the average order value so let me quickly bring this on the canvas convert it into a card change the formatting now there's two ways to calculate or to verify if this is correct or not the first way is you can see i have this table sales amount if i change the setting and make this as average then at the bottom if you can observe i am seeing the value as 992 so that's one way the other way is let me just change it to don't summarize and let me just remove this and put it again okay so i have the sales amount as 29765 and there are total 30 sales that have happened based on the 30 sale ids that i see in this table so by that logic if i have to pull the calculator and I simply divide the amount 29765 by 30, I should get 992.167. So that verifies this. So that's all for this video. Two simple scalar values and one summarized function along with the top end function. We also created a read table and created a placeholder for storing all our measures. Uh, I hope you found value from this video. This is just the beginning of a series of videos. And if you like it, please share it with your friends. Leave your feedback in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, happy learning and thanks for watching.